The Assassin's Creed Shadows Yasuke drama is the single worst gaming drama I've ever seen in my entire time on the internet. Now, there's been a lot of other bad gaming dramas such as Blizzard being sued by the state of California for mistreating their employees to numerous and endless scandals involving esports match fixing or bad behavior by various figures in the gaming community. But for me, the drama surrounding Yasuke and Assassin's Creed Shadows is really the low point of gaming drama. And in this video, I want to go into why, and then I want to do a little bit of a channel update at the end of this video. So to summarize, Ubisoft have cast a black character from Japanese history in the lead role as a samurai in their upcoming game, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Now, there have been many different dramas all surrounding the announcement of Assassin's Creed Shadows, but they all generally, sort of, maybe kind of, are all surround the question of whether Yasuke was actually a samurai or a retainer. This has led to a lot of people that don't follow gaming drama going, what? As to how a complicated question of historical minutiae about the term samurai, retainer, and citing Japanese works from the Nobunaga era could turn into a gaming commentary drama. And to explain this, we kind of need to talk about everything but what people are actually talking about with the Aske and Assassin's Creed Shadows drama. But before I do that, let's address the actual historical question here for a second. Now, I am not a Japanese historian. My background was teaching and studying ancient Greece and the classical era. So I'm gonna take an example that's more within my wheelhouse. While there are, I think, legitimate questions to be asked about the way some academics behave vis-a-vis -vis history and pop culture, and there have been, seeming to me, some legitimate questions raised about a certain Thomas Lockley and his treatment of Wikipedia to provide citations for his own work, I'll leave that to academic plagiarism committees and to the university he works for to figure those sorts of things out. I'm sorry gaming commentary channels on the internet are not going to solve that sort of thing for you. But let me give a brief kind of foray into how these things generally fall out in the academic world. Take somebody much more famous than Yasuke. Take Socrates from ancient Greece. If you ask a variety of different scholars what we know about Socrates, you're likely to hear different things from almost every one of them, barring the sort of big life points that we all know, such as his death from drinking hemlock. Some scholars think we have almost no good personal accounts of Socrates' own life, with the accounts in Plato and Xenophon being entirely their own philosophical and literary creations. Some people think Xenophon is more accurate than Plato. Some people think early Plato is a good portrayal of Socrates, much better than Xenophon, but not accurate because later Plato is in fact Plato writing as himself using Socrates as a vehicle. Other scholars think that all of Plato's Socrates is Plato's own creation, and that Plato never touches Socrates, but in fact, Xenophon, read in conjunction with later Plato, gives you some idea of how Socrates' voice would have emerged. You're going to get endless different interpretations. This is normal within academia, working on ancient history with limited sources. And I think it's safe to say, despite Yasuke being much closer to us in history, it's fair to say that one samurai has substantially less sources for his life and times than Socrates did. What I want people to take away from this is that it is fundamentally and horribly disingenuous for both academics using their PhD credentials and YouTube commentary channels to present either of their sides as conclusive. It is completely disingenuous for the PhD students on places like Reddit to be telling the commentary channels that no, 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 trust us. Look at our four rather vague sources that we've translated that you can't translate that show that he was definitely a samurai. And if you doubt us, well, find someone with a PhD and tenure that disagrees with us. But on the other hand, it's absolutely and equally stupid of so many commentary channels, many of whom I watch and respect, who know absolutely F all about how these things work, to begin running with lines like, fake samurai and wasn't a samurai. Academia and historical research is not a prop for your YouTube commentary video, but having a PhD is not a prop for karma on Reddit. And, uh, and of course, while saying it, I, I, I do recognize that it is now. I, I'm saying it rhetorically. This is a, a rhetorical. I'm saying it shouldn't be. It definitely is. 
But the, the point I'm trying to get at here is the question of whether Yasuke was a samurai is completely irrelevant to the actual drama, and all the people debating historical facts are missing out entirely on the point surrounding the drama. The drama happened because there has been a boiling, surging feeling of resentment in the gaming community for about a decade now that a hobby that many of us enjoy has been slowly and slowly commercialized, politicized, and turned into a product. As gaming has been turned steadily and slowly into more of a mass market product, there has been consistent loathing from game developers, game journalists, and even some of the higher ups at major studios themselves towards the very consumer base they're aimed at. A consistent feeling of, oh, I love the gaming industry and potentially how much money we could make with it. It's just a shame about all the smelly nerds. And because this is 2024 and not 2010, it is impossible to ignore the wider political ramifications surrounding this individual issue in gaming. Despite what many media outlets will try and tell you about how diverse gaming is, the reality is that, especially within the West and especially within the Anglo-American English-speaking sphere of gaming, most gamers are white men over the age of 25. For example, the analytics on this channel lean 99.9% .9 male, with 50% of my audience being over the age of 30. And in an era where political views seem to be shaped by age, race, and national background more than ever, it is a absolute fact that most gamers in the Anglo-American sphere lean to the center and center right. You can see this dissonance when you see what is said about people like Asmongold on Twitter and then watch as these people's minds are absolutely blown to find that he's one of the largest Twitch streamers and YouTubers on the entire internet. They're literally puzzled as to where all these people that watch his content are coming from and how he can stream to 50 to 100,000 people at a time. This kind of delusion isn't just limited to Twitter, nor is it just limited to computer games. Take this quote from recently fired Wizards of the Coast employee Kyle Brink, who said to Bounding Into Comics, this is not the face of the hobby anymore. And I think there's been mistakes made in years past where people assume that D&D players were all, you know, white dudes in a basement, which has been a faulty assumption for a lot of years and gets more and more faults every day. And so in my viewpoint, guys like me can't leave soon enough. Well, I agree with him on one thing. But it's Brink's comment, I think, that shows why people are actually, in their guts, so annoyed with the Assassin's Creed situation. I do think there are some very deluded people on both sides of the argument that actually do care about the historical minutia to the point of rage and arguing over the internet. That is normal for the internet. People always rage and argue over minutia. But the story would not have the broad appeal it does, nor I think created the general controversy it has, if it wasn't for the lurking feeling that so many in the nerd community have had over the past few years, that they're coming for you, that they really wish they had a different audience, that every little choice, every little thing they do and every piece of media that you used to enjoy that they now own is an attempt to get a new audience on and to make you hate the game. That in their mind, you probably should have stopped buying the, this franchise a long time ago so that all the kids that are playing Fortnite will stop playing Fortnite and suddenly buy Assassin's Creed. You can't leave soon enough. But don't worry, they'll still take your $200 for the collector's edition for a game entirely full of microtransactions because they, they still want your money if you're offering, by the way. They just don't want to be associated with the demographic of dudes who may very well elect that orange-haired dude from Florida to the White House again. That's really the core of the issue. And somehow in doing so, this has brought out, I think, the worst of all the sides. We've seen everything from commentary channels do what they're often criticized for, which is shoddy reporting and not really understanding a lot of the issues at hand. And on the other side, we've seen mass media called gaming fans racist once again, and we've seen people laud their academic credentials on a topic that really, from what I've looked at, has so few sourcing. I don't see how anyone could legitimately, from an academic perspective, take a very strong stance in any particular direction. 
Oh, this video has already gone longer than I thought it was, so I'll save my uh, channel update for another video or maybe just put it in the community post. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more videos like this one in the future. Until then, peace.